we are going to start off with the Chicago Bears. Now, let me get my, my notes here. I feel like I'm probably going to need glasses with all these old eyes here pretty soon. But the Chicago Bears win total sits at 7.5. To go over, minus 110. To go under, minus 120. To win the division, they are plus 550. To win the NFC, plus 3,300. You bet on that, I feel like you would probably just be burning cash. I, that's how I feel right now. But to make the playoffs, yes, is plus 165. No, is minus 200. They are projected favorites in four out of 17 games. And their projected strength of schedule, right dead in the middle, 15th most difficult, 17th easiest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They pushed last season. They've had six unders and one over in the prior seven seasons. I mean, they got they got a lot of tackle issues right now. We did see over the weekend that they signed Jason Peters. I don't know necessarily what that means, but okay. The offense ranked 24th and 27th in EPA the last two seasons. Fields could probably fix that single-handedly if he gets the job. Uh, the Bears ranked last in the NFL in third down conversions over expected. Fields' legs alone could probably fix that this season. So, Foles and Trubisky ranked 6th and 10th in PFF's turnover-worthy throws. I I mean, it can't really get much worse than that. Of course, I brought up in, in our prior episode, it can always get worse, but I don't foresee that. They are facing the toughest set of opposing offenses this season, or at least projected offenses. The road schedule is brutal. The defense replacing Kyle Fuller with Desmond Trufant is a significant downgrade. I I am going under the 7.5. I want them to be good. I want them to be really good because I like the Bears. But I don't see it this season. I think that this is the, the rebuild towards next year. And I don't know if they don't hit 7.5. If they don't break that, I don't know that Matt Nagy is going to be there next season. How do, how do you feel about him? So I, I, I feel very conflicted about this team. I think they're going to be okay. I don't think they're going to be bad. I don't think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be somewhere right in the middle. Seven and a half is the number. As a bet, it's a complete stay away. But I wrote down on my sheet, eight and nine. So that means it, it, for, for our purposes here, I got to go over. I, I think Fields is going to be a massive upgrade to who I actually think Andy Dalton is a massive upgrade to what they had at quarterback last year. All right, I just do. I think this offense is going to be better. I still believe in Khalil Mack. I still believe in Roquan Smith. I still think they have maybe one of the, not the best, because there are a couple of other that, as soon as I said that, are coming to my mind. They have one of the best one-two punches at the linebacker position than anybody in the league. I think they're going to play some teams, and and I looked through this schedule. They're going to be some teams that they're going to beat just because they're old historic games. Like, do I think the Packers are better than them? Yes, a lot better than them. Do I think they can win a game against the Packers in Chicago? Sure. Like, will they? Probably not, maybe. They won't be favored to win it. But if they win that game, would it surprise me? No. I think there's a couple of games like that. I also think there's a couple of other teams in this division that I do believe are bad. And, and you know, that, that helps you juice a couple of victories, you know, but I could use the same logic for those teams beating the Bears as well. Yes. Like, could could the Lions win the a game against Chicago in Detroit? Yeah. I, I don't think they'll be favored to, but could they win that? Sure. I got eight and nine, man. I've got them at six wins. So, like, I believe that Justin Fields will be improved. I don't think that they run with him right out of the gate. Although there is an argument that they probably should. But also, you don't want to get him out there and, and get him live bullets and get his confidence down, right? Like, we've, we've been through this talk with rookie quarterbacks all the time. I do think they are much more prepared for the NFL game these days as opposed to in the past. But I, I think this team is going to struggle some. They, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. So I, I, I hope. I, now. I think that confidence thing is a, is a myth, man. Because... With that logic, Peyton Manning should have been a bust because True. he came out and he got his ass kicked and he played like shit and he was terrible. All right, not everybody is going to be David Carr, okay, who's just terrible from jump and never, never can 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 outrun the quicksand. All right, not everybody's that. We've got 
synopsis where the guy is really good, and we got synopsis where the guy ends up being really bad. All right? This happens, okay? Is Fields going to be mature enough and strong enough to, to withstand the woes? I think he can. I think he will. But if, if Fields comes out and is as expected, as advertised, what everybody on draft night was talking about, what do you think the ceiling for this team is? You think they could win 11, 12? No, no, no. no. Even, even if he's that good, I still think the best, the ceiling is 9 and 8. I, I would give him one more win than I've got him. Because the NFL is really hard, and I don't think this roster is great. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.